All right, in this video, we are going to be making a space uh, window um, using compositing five different images here. So we have this our outer space image, our planet, our window room here, our lens flare, and a, uh, an astronaut. Now, you guys can, again, you guys can do anything you want with these. Um, you don't have to follow exactly what you have or I have, but you can kind of make, you know, kind of decide what you want to do with these images. And again, if you want to add your own images, that's also fine. Um, as long as you use at least these five. Um, typically, what I've done in the past, I've mixed it up. I've done a couple different things. Um, my particular favorite, I think, to do, what I like to do is um, I like to make this like a like a space station window. That's kind of usually my plan. And then I put the astronaut out there as a window cleaner or something with a star and a star background and you know this planet in there as well. So that's really my plan. Um, you know, you, get, you can kind of just do this as you go, but I do recommend that you kind of think about what you want to do and then you kind of just, you know, add to it or take away whatever you want here. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move these. They don't have to do them all at once, but obviously if the window is going to be, um, you know, here, I, I got to get rid of this, this, the, this, this background. So I'm going to be cutting these out. Um, and this image is going to be, you know, having the star field and the astronaut behind it. So this is going to be the most topmost layer. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the window room to the top. That's probably going to be the topmost layer. After that, everything else can kind of be, kind of, we'll figure all that out as we go. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the window room here. And now these images, I did bring in as smart objects. I just dragged and dropped them into my document that I created. So we will need to rasterize these before we do any sort of image editing. There are plenty of, of image editing things that do work for smart objects. It's just to, to make it easy, I tend to rasterize them. So I tend to size them roughly in place first, then rasterize them. And then from that point on, everything I show you in this video should work. Um, so just be sure you do that because certain things won't work. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this window room here. I'm gonna hit Control T, which is the quickie for transform. And I'm going to drag any one of these corners up. Now, you don't have to um, worry so much about getting everything. I mean, like, you know, you can, you, it's okay to crop some of this if you want to. Or maybe I'll come in here and, you know, you know, position is moving this. And I'm just clicking in the center and dragging this some more. And I honestly don't know if this will work. I'm going to try it. If I hold down Shift. When I grab any one of these, it will let me deform this. So maybe I'll try stretching this a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this, but you know what? This is the time to try things. So I'm gonna deform it a little bit and it looks like it might be okay. So I'm not too worried about those plants. It doesn't look that bad, but I mean, yeah, it's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, I, you know, I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and deform it. So I just held down shift when I transformed and I tr made it fit my entire background. You know, I filled everything with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Now, I like to do this step before I rasterize it just because generally because I think it, you know, I see better results. Depends on what the source image quality was. But that's one thing smart objects are good for. They, they you know, they're good for a lot of things, but that's one thing that they do well is if the, the source file is big enough, it doesn't actually suffer any pixel degradation until you actually rasterize it. So it's, it's best to, um, de, you know, doesn't degrade until you until you start sizing it after it's rasterized. So that's assuming the, the pitch is big enough to support it in the, to begin with. So I've sized it first, then I'm gonna come in here. And again, if you have to like fix it a little bit, that's not a big deal. Just major size changes you generally wanna do first before you rasterize. Now to rasterize a smart object, and again, it's just, you can tell it's a smart layer. If in the bottom right hand corner of the layer, it has this like paper icon, that stands for a smart object. And they're great for other kinds of um, working, in other ways of working in Photoshop for like, you know, like, uh, like magazine designs or, you know, things where you have to link the other files. That's what it's great for. In this case, we're just doing like raw image compositing. So not so much for this. So I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, right click and hold on th this here. And we will get up all our layer options here. There's lots of them. And the rasterize layer is roughly in the middle. We want to rasterize this layer. 
All right, so now the window room is rasterized, and this means now if I come in here and erase things or do whatever, uh, I'm just, I hit the E key for the eraser, and I'm just, just, you know, there's an example here, erasing. You can see it erases to transparent pixels. I'm going to undo this for the show. So we can come in here and just start erasing. What, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to really get rid of these. I think I'm just going to straight up erase them. Um, and I can come in here. I can come in here and, you know, oh, I'm going to start erasing these, and that would work. <laughs> However, I do want to start you guys off on, you know, trying to explore non-destructive editing as much as you can. Um, it does add a, a little bit of file size to the, the pro program, but it does give you options down the road in case you change your mind. And one of those things is layer mask. So if we select this layer and add a layer mask, what that will allow us to do is mask out things in this particular layer, which we, which would act as if we erased them, but we'd have the ability to get back to them and paint them, them back if we needed them. So it does add some file um, some file size to that, but it's okay because we can totally get back to it if needed. So unfortunately, I don't know the quick key for this. I'm a little bummed about that, but you can select the layer, you go to layer, and do layer mask. And uh, there's two, two main options here, reveal all and hide all. All it does is one just keeps all the image there, the other one hides the whole image and you paint the mask to reveal things. I tend to do reveal all, um, but either one's fine. It's, you know, so I'm gonna do reveal all. And what happens now is no, not only do we have our layers um, going up and down, we have layers side by side. So you gotta kind of take note of that, uh, that, the fact that we have these layers now side by side. Um, we have our actual layer that if you click on this, it'll actually select it. We have our mask layer to the right of it. Um, so we now have two layers that are thing. And this what this icon right here is this, that's a chain link. So that means that these layers are linked. So if I move the layer the layer, um, the mask will also move. Almost all the time I generally want this. There's only a few select times I don't want this. So um, most likely you want to keep this checked. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna paint on the layer mask. Now how layer mask generally work um, is they are they use black and white values and grays in between as a percentages right now white in this particular case because the mask is reveal all it shows everything if I were to paint black on here it would hide whatever um, hide whatever that I'm showing here and if I were to paint like 50% gray it would only show 50% it would actually reduce the opacity so for example if I Make sure my foreground color is black. And again, you can default this by hitting the D key. So if you're if you're something else, then you know it'll hit D key, it'll default to white and black, and then you can just swap it. Uh, again, I love my quick keys. X is the quick key to swap back and forth between the foreground color and the background color. That'll be very useful when painting on a mask, especially if you're doing exactly what I'm doing here. D key, default colors, because masks are generally painted in black and white. And then X key to swap back and forth between those foreground and background as needed. So again, the black, it will, it will take away pixels here. And I'm going to go to my brush tool. And unfortunately, my brush settings are set a little weird. Let me go ahead and reset them real quick. Let me go ahead and drop these all to normal one. I'll, I'm using a pen tablet, so I do have a... Um, um, you know, some, uh, I, I do have shape uh, dynamics being controlled by my pen brusher. And I do need to do one last setting. I need to actually change this back to a round brush. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. So it's a, it's a relatively normal brush, other than the fact I can, I can control the size of this with my pen here. But if I were to paint solid black on here at 100%, because that's also not set on mine, you will see it disappear, almost like an eraser. I'm not using the eraser, I'm using the brush. And I'm painting on a mask. And what's happening is it's taken away. Now, the great thing about the mask, again, again, this is just, it behaves just like the eraser. So what is the advantage? The advantage is I can always swap back to white or you know maybe some other color, You know, like I said, like gray or 20% gray. And I can come back to whatever I want to do, you know, do a bunch of things, close the file, launch it saved as a PSD, open the file, and come back. You know what? I really should have kept this this here. And I can paint, change this to white and paint back and bring it back. So we can we can take away and 
add to the, the, to the mask um, freely, and it's, uh, it saves with the, the PSD files. Now, again, if I were to change this to, let's say, 50% and paint back, you can see I can bring back in percentages as well. I'm going to do uh, Control Plus to zoom in. So you can see I painted over there with you know some semi transparency. It does it does obey this because it's just a it's just a scale. You know, I, right now I'm just painting. I'm just gonna I'll switch back to 100% opacities here. I'm just gonna paint with 100% opacities for this. So that's what masks do. Now I'm using the brush right now, but you can do this however you want. With again, uh, we explored in previous videos, we made selections and filled them. If you want to use that approach, you can still do that approach. It, it, it's a it's a mask. Whatever you, however you add the pixels to this layer, this layer on the side, they're all fine. Um, again, it's just it's just you want to use black and white. All right. So if I want to do something like that, I can do that. And what I'm going to show you here that I'm going to use is the polygonal lasso tool. So again, the, the lasso tool is the third tool in the toolbar. I'm going to click and hold here, so right click and hold, and I'm going to switch to polygonal lasso, or you can hit shift L to, to toggle between these tools. With polygonal lasso selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, how this works is I click and I let go, and I can move the mouse freely, and when I click again, it'll draw a straight line, and then when I hit return or enter, it will it will close the loop so it'll draw back to the start um, and, and close it and that makes a selection so let me just go ahead and show you here if I click here up in the top right uh, left corner or any corner for that matter and then I draw and I like I clicked and then I I'm, I'm, I'm I left up on the mouse and I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next corner here and click again oh, didn't, didn't quite click to click not quite accepting my clicks here all right, I tried using my, t my pen. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go down the bottom. Looks like I have a graphics glitch going on right now. Hopefully, you know, maybe I can just, you know, right here. Um, I don't get these too often, but generally what fixes them for me is uh, just going like control plus and minus. And that usually fixes them for me. My tablet, I think, has some quick keys also that's uh, kind of getting in the way of it. All right, so there you go. You see, I drew out that selection. I'm going to go ahead and control D and do it, again, do it again just because of that those graphic glitches. So I'm going to go ahead and start in the top corner of mine. Click, move my mouse, click, and I'm really off this time. That's fine. Click, click, click. And you can see it if you go all the way back around the beginning. Um, I'm going to do one more time, I'm going to do it one more time. I'm, I zoomed in also because so I can get a little more accurate one here. Also, if you come around back to the beginning, and you can see the icon slightly change with that little circle on the bottom right. That is also the other way of closing off the circle, or in square in this case, the square-like shape, or rectangular one. And there you go. Now, this selection means nothing until we fill it with some sort of pixels, obviously. So if I have black pixels in my foreground and I do shift backspace, which is the fill command, make sure your contents is also set to foreground. Sometimes it's set to content aware or background color. Just make sure it matches. Again, mine's the foreground square. It's the top left one. So I want this to be foreground color. Hit OK. And you can see it filled all that 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 selection with black on that layer on a layer mask so that interprets this to be transparent. I get Control D to deselect. Now if I zoom in here and to kind of look, I maybe mean, I can't really tell right now, but I mean it looks pretty good. Did a pretty good job. But if let, for some reason I say you know what I don't want this 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 big slightly bigger th black line or maybe I I accidentally cut into the window. I can just change my, my my color to accordingly, black to take away, white to bring back, and I can fix it. So this comes in handy. For example, I'm going to go ahead and can you bone these rest ones. The rest of these are easy. Um, actually, you know what? While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys a different way of doing it. 
I'm going to go ahead and just use the, the brush tool. Um, the brush tool, again, what we can do is we can just paint black here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down, move the, the moving the screen. So I clicked, moved, moved over here to the right, hold down the shift key, and click again. What I'll do is it'll fill. Unfortunately, because I have shape dynamics on, it's thinning the line by default, even with that. So let me undo that. Go back and turn the shape dynamics off. You don't actually want shape dynamics off. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to click, click, move my screen over here, hold down shift key. So I didn't hold, I don't hold down shift until right about when I'm about to click again. There you go. You see it drew a straight line. Now, is the last tool probably faster than this? Probably. I'm just showing you a different way of doing it. So I'm just going to hold on shift, drag the brush. What this is good for, when we get to the astronaut, um, I will probably use this a lot more because it's not so perfect as squares. So in this particular case, it's not as fast. Um, but on the astronaut, it's going to be good. So I, um, I'll leave that for the astronaut. So again, I'll just I, I can now, uh, even though I did this, I can be a little more sloppy with my lasso tool. So that's one thing. So I come in here and I'm just using my, my polygonal lasso tool again, just clicking, 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 going around, clicking. There's my selection, shift backspace, filled my foreground color because that is my 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 black color and my, my, my two colors. And there you go, close that one. All right, last one here. Now you're gonna be like, I'm just gonna assume we want to keep the flowers. The astronauts need some flowers in their their cargo bays. They got some throw pillows too. They're they're, they're classy like that. Um, so all right, I'm gonna go ahead and click here and click here. And you're like, oh wait a minute. If I want to keep the flowers, if I do a fill, it's gonna cut the flowers, and that is true. It will. And maybe maybe you really want this latch thing here too. I mean, like if I do this, it's going to be very hard, and you know, you might try to trace around it. Um, you can do that. I don't recommend it. Just that's the beauty about a mask is you can um, really go all all in, and then come back and add, take, add things back that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and just literally cut away this this latch here as well as those two flowers and fill this. And then what I can do is I can deselect Control D and come back with my brush tool and I'm going to clean this up a bit this is where that shift comes in handy so I'm going to click here hold on shift and click shift and click shift and click shift and click and I can kind of tighten this up a bit I don't really care for what happened here you know, maybe get rid of clean this up just a little bit more all right and then what I can do is I'm going to come back in here and just paint this latch, kind of kind of get it back, and then use my brush. Now, all I'm doing is toggling back and forth between the foreground and background color. Again, X um, this is the quick key for that. And uh, when I want to bring pixels back, I click on white. When I take away, black. See, there we go, just kind of something like that. And I'm going to do the same thing for the plan over here. I'm going to bring back white. And I'm going to kind of explore. I'm like, OK, there, there. It's OK. And then like it's a multi-step process. Now, there is, of course, all, all kinds of different ways of doing this. But this is the way I think is pretty valuable because it gives you a lot of control down the line. So you can see, there we go. There's that. Bring that back. I think there's one more flower here. There we go. Paint all these back and then come back. Now with the, the back to black. And then kind of I'm just drawing around these. Is there other ways? Of course, there's always other ways. Uh, don't forget your bracket keys make your brush bigger and smaller. You need to make your brush bigger or smaller for some things. To get in here in the, the details, you can, totally can do that. So I tend to use the brackets and the X key I'll, quite a bit when I'm working on this. And you can see that this right here, brush at a distance, is going to be totally fine. Again, if it's not fine, that's the beauty about a mask. You can come in here and tighten this up a bit more. Okay. All right. So there we go. There's my image. 
with these erased, but they're not truly erased because I have them as a mask. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my stars right now. And I can almost guarantee that the stars are going to be the bottom layer. So I'm going to go ahead and again, these are all interchangeable. I'm going to drag this all the way down to the bottom layer and then use the move tool to position them. Again, the move tool's quick key is V or it's the mo top most left of the toolbox right here in this little like uh, crosshairs looking uh, arrow thing. And if you have to resize it, feel free to do that. Again, that is the control T key to resize, but mine's pretty good. So control T again to resize, and you can you can drag these around to resize if you need to. But I personally think mine looks fine the way it is. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. Okay, so there's my space scene. You can see I have this, this very comfortable um, looking uh, space window. Maybe it's, you know, some massive spaceship in the future where they can afford a little bit of comfort like this nowadays. Um, instead of one of our more modern, modern satellite, you know, NASA type um, space stations or something. Okay, so we have our outer space there. We have our windows. Let's go ahead and add the astronaut in here. Now the astronaut is going to be you know, probably right below the, the windows that could get moved around. And this is honestly my particular one. Yours may be different. Mine is way too big. And so I need to shrink my astronaut down. This is not too, too um, uh, skip my size, size I want. I'm going to hit Control T. I'm going to shrink this down a bit by dragging one corner and dragging it in. Now, my particular reference image here, the, the, the starting exercise image here, the foot is chopped off from the astronaut. And yes, we probably could fix that, but it might be challenging this skill level um, but for you that are just new to Photoshop. So I just encourage that you just kind of have that leg be off, you know, off screen for in behind the window. So I, um, this particular one, what I'm going to do is while that is a really cool, um, you know, like view of the planet and, you know, I, I don't really want that because I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the other planet for this. So I'm going to go through this and erase all of this and just keep the astronaut, maybe the, you know, obviously the cord in the bag, maybe. So I'm just kind of kind of gauging what size I want this to be right now. And then when I have the size, I'm going to hit head and hit return. So I'm going to say, OK, I want it to be about that size right there. Hit enter. And you don't have to paint. Remember, you don't have to paint work on this one if you if it's easier for you. Um, it's easier, usually easier for me. I usually turn off those other layers. I just click on the little eyeball and then go to the astronaut. Now the astronaut is if we're going to employ the same exact strategy um, with this one as we did with the, the uh, space windows. We're going to add a layer mask. Um, we probably won't be able to use the lasso tool as much. But that's okay. We'll, we can use the brush tool. And we probably could explore some other ones. Um, I'm not sure how well they will work, but I will give them a shot um, and see how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and um, select the astronaut and once again do layer, layer mask, reveal all. This has a layer mask. And I'm going to go ahead and try some of these other selection tools. I actually haven't actually used them on this particular image before. So I'm not sure what we'll get. So let's stay tuned. Let's see what we get here. So one of our quick tools we can use is the magic wand or one of its its tools. I, I, I um, The other ones, the, normally by default, the, it's the quick selection tools, this one. Um, I haven't really used object selection tools, so let's give that a shot real quick. Um, object selection tool, you usually draw around it, and it tries to trace the object. Let me go ahead and see what it does and see if we can use this one. I think I have a feeling because this is two tone, it's not going to work. Eh, it worked pretty good, actually. That worked very good. Okay, so let's show you how to do that. So what this did is I went to the object selection tool. Um, the algorithms are getting better and better with each version of Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and, and change this to object selection. Again, you can change this by right clicking and holding. Or, and, or you can hit Shift W to get to this particular icon. So it looks like a little person. If you start drawing a box like this and you're off, let's say you, I'm like, oh my goodness, I missed this thing. Any selection, any kind of selection in, in, in Photoshop, while it is active, this means lassos, marquees, anything, any kind of selection, 
if you hold down space bar while you're drawing the selection, this only works while you're drawing the selection, you can move that selection. It stops it from trying to make the selection and just lets you move it. Um, this is far easier to do it now than it is later. So I'm going to go ahead and drag around this astronaut. Um, I recommend trying to be as tight as possible with it. And I'm not going to worry about the bag so much right now. Just this astronaut and this part right here. And let go. And it did a pretty good job. It didn't do, you know, it's missing some things. But that's okay. So what I'm going to do is is I'm going to go ahead and add this to the mask, but there is a slight problem here. It, besides the fact that it, um, it uh, is what the opposite of what we want. We want to actually get rid of the things, not the astronaut. We need to inverse the selection. And then the other thing is when we go to erase this, it's going to be like those flowers. Those flowers, um, I was able to paint them back, but that was much smaller. That was just a couple flowers. I didn't really care. You know, I didn't really mind going painting those back like that. If we try to do it on this, it's probably going to be a lot more work. So what I'm going to do instead, and this is a great start, don't get me wrong. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and inverse it. We have to do that. And the quick key for that is control shift I, or if you're opposed to quick keys, you go up to select, modify, sorry, no, sorry, not modify, um, select inverse right there. Shift to control I. So now we have everything around that. And again, if I were to fill this right now, it would it would totally work. It's just we're going to lose this. We're going to lose a piece of the boots. We're going to lose a little bit around here. Um, it did a great job, but it's 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 you know it's got some problems. But so, but if, just to show you, if I do fill foreground color, we get that. And it, we can totally come in here if you want. Control D, paint you switch to white and paint this around. That would that would totally work. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to undo. Instead, what I'm going to show you is a, even a new mask. Um, so mask upon mask here. Um, what I'm going to hit is the Q key. The Q key, the quick key, the Q key stands is for quick mask. And what this will do, I actually always get this backwards or wrong. One of these is going to turn red and the other side won't. In this particular case, I, this is the part I always get wrong is what's selected and what's not. And honestly, it doesn't really matter because you can always invert it so in this case if paint the astronaut red that is what's technically not selected uh, if I'm doing this right again I, I don't really pay too much attention because I usually paint it wrong all the time and it doesn't really matter like I said because you can always just paint whatever's easiest you know paint away the red or paint in the red because that's what we're going to do we're going to add to the red or take away from the red and then inverse it as needed in this case, it made the astronaut red, and that's fine. So this works very similar to layer masks. That's the reason why we did layer masks first. But instead of painting on the mask, um, and then you know the black and white actually taking away the mask, we're painting on something called a quick selection mask. So for example, and it works the exact same way. Black will add to the, the mask in this case, red, I think that red color, like that. And white will take away. So black and white, you know, take away. And then if I hit the Q key again to exit quick mask, you'll see what will happen. It'll add this to the selection. So you can see, or take away from the selection, actually, technically. So you can see it took away from the selection. Q key, if I come in here and change this to white, and paint this away, and then hit the Q key again. Q will let you enter and exit this mode. You can see how it has this masks in here. So, And I can still see the image. So what we're going to do instead, and I'm going to undo this back until I don't have that big thing here, is it, and again, it doesn't matter which, you can you can paint the astronaut completely red or can paint everything around the astronaut red. We're going to make one of the others, you know, um, you know, like I said, be uniform. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to paint, on, on my case, I'm going to paint the astronaut red. You know, so I'm going to use the black here to paint the astronaut red um, in these spots. And it's just like an overlay, which is kind of see-through, which is nice. I'm just using the black brush. And then there's these gaps here. I can, I can switch to white, and I can paint these these away. Because I, I, I'm going to eventually get rid of these. I can get X key to switch back and forth. 
it's a little hard to see what's going on in here. I tend to go ahead and just keep a lot of this because you know it's, I can always I can always add away or take away later, but I'm just keeping this gear here. And the other great thing here is when you're in quick selection mode, what's really really nice is we can actually use things like our lasso tools and our fill commands. So I know it's mind boggling, but totally can use these. So if I do a lasso and fill this, I can do that. Like deselect. So when you're in like quick selection mode, it's like you can use your selection te techniques on the actual selection. It's it's weird, like that. All right. So I'm gonna come in here and use my brush tool again on white and get rid of this other stuff that I don't want. I'm just painting away the, these. Again, don't forget that your bracket keys make your brush bigger or smaller. X key, and I'm just painting this away now. Kind of just kind of getting in, in the, the zone. Um, if you want to keep this piece here, you can. I'm not even sure what this is up here. Probably some sort of a tenor or something. I generally just get rid of the whole thing. I just kind of keep a little bit of it, something like this, and then whatever this is back here. But you know, it's up to you if you want to keep that. To me, it looks like the, you know the astronauts getting ready to clean the, the space station windows with the scrubber or something. You know. Match one, or not match one, sorry, X key, swap the colors. And here, back and forth, I'm constantly hitting, well, not constantly, but I'm hitting the X key back and forth as I go through here, going around the edges. Uh, I don't know what these are, if it's like little, you know, oxygen being little uh, propellant, or if it's a little extra straps, I'm just going to go ahead and let them not be red, that way they get deleted. Kind of come back around here. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this bag. So I'll go ahead and place a little bit of this and come in here and do this. Now, the great thing is I, I kind of skipped over this, but this I didn't actually convert this layer to um, a rasterized image, which is fine. Like I said, layer mask actually work fine with smart objects. So right now, this this hasn't really affected us. So that's, again, smart objects can support a lot of things. So it's not that big of a deal. I will have to eventually, though, convert it. I'll show you why later. And that'll be fine. I should not, unless I'm horribly mistaken, uh, should not break your, your, your layer mask. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and paint this. And again, you can make your brush bigger if you want. I'm just doing it getting all this in here. Control minus, control minus, control minus. All right, I think that looks good. At least it's a good starting spot. I'll go ahead and hit the Q key. And I'm gonna go ahead and now, with, when you're not in quick mass mode, and you're back where you can see the marching ants, that's what we call these uh, guys here. I can keep the end, it's a mistake. Little right there, I wanna get rid of. Oops. X key, brush, there we go. Q, there we go. So Q key to enter and exit quick mass mode. It looks like I missed this here. So even with the quick mass, you can kind of see that you might not be able to see a few, few things. So there we go. Go ahead and add this cord back in here, quick mask. But it's so quick, haha, <laughs> pun, the name puns there, that it's, it's, it's not a big deal. So you can kind of come come in and come out of quick mass just by tapping that Q key. All right, so I think I'm ready to do that. Now I'm gonna actually add this to the layer mask. And again, I'm not in quick mass mode. I'm in normal mass, you know, normal selection mode. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with black. And you can see there is our astronaut. It went all, went all the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring back the windows just to take a look and the, the sky. You can see this looks pretty good. The position of this is kind of weird. So maybe what I'll do is I'll come in here and reposition this. And the great thing about keeping these linked is I can come in here and I can scale this up. I can maybe rotate this, position it however I want to, whatever I want to do with this. 
and hit enter. All I did to do that was the transform tool. And you can see there's the astronaut in there. All right, so there's our astronaut. Now, there's a lot of things that I could do to improve this astronaut in terms of color. Um, again, because this is a smart object, um, technically it will work. It makes um, a different kind of layer. Um, I tend to like to rasterize my stuff before I start doing that. Um, however, what I recommend that you do, and I get, you, get, you get in the habit of doing, is if you're if you're about to move into a process where you might destroy something, i.e. destructive editing, it's a good idea to copy things and hide them as backups. And that, that's a good practice. And this one is, it really isn't needed as much, but I do want to show you that now, just to get you guys in the habit of, of doing that. And again, so I'm going to make a copy of this layer. All I'm going to do is hold down Alt when I drag this layer some. And just, I'm going to drag it to the bottom because it's a copy. And I'm going to copy it down there and I'm going to turn it off. In fact, a lot of times I would put these in a group just as backups. But for, maybe I'll even select this, this layer, hit Control G. Again, Control G will let you group things together. And it makes a group. And if you want to name, name anything, double click on the words. In the layer palette. I'm just going to call this backup. And there you go. I have a group called backup with a copy of my astronaut. So again, I held on Alt and dragged the layer to make a copy. And then I hit Control G on Windows to, to add it to a group. It's the only one in the group. I renamed it backup. And then if you want to, just turn this eyeball off right here. That just turns off that group. So you can see, you can see we have our backup, which is behind outer space, you can't see it, but it's there. Then we have our back one up here. So if I make some sort of mistake, it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize this, 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 this other one now, not my backup. Right click and do it over here. Sorry, not on the word. Rasterize layer. I think it should give us a dialogue about keeping the mask. I don't know. Never mind. Just rasterize this. Okay, so it wasn't a problem. It just straight up rasterizes it with, and keeps the layer mask. So that's great. So, things that we can do here. Um, there's a couple things we can do. There's a lot of things we can do, actually. Um, I and I probably should have did this before I started um, um, actually masking because it would have made it easier to see certain things, but that's okay. Mistakes made, have been made. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to Image. Adjustments, and one of my favorite adjustments is um, called Shadows and Highlights. Um, what it does, this is a great one if you have like an image with like really like dark shadows, um, are bright highlights. So if you ever take, especially for your photographers out, photographers out there, take a picture of like wedding photos or something where they have the really bright highlights on their foreheads, you know, um, or, or something on their face. Shadows and Heights is great for that, or if they're standing in shadows, or it's getting near dark, it's great for those, those kinds of things too. It won't completely like bring like a, an image that is, in, you know, shot in darkness, you know, and, and make it easy to be seen, but it does help with the pictures that are shot in shadows, and that's the name, as well as bright highlights that you can get from the sun. If I click on this, it has two simple sliders, shadows, oak tries to open up the shadows, Highlights tries to darken the highlights. So let me zoom in a little bit closer in some areas here that you're going to see where it helps. So in this area, it's going to, you're going to see the shadows kind of kick in. Um, it's also really good on the bag part here. The bag part here. As you can see. You can also click the preview button on most things to see what it does. It opens up those. And on the highlights, oh, oh, come on. There we go. locked into this one right here. See my ha hand is on my tablet. I'm going to close this. This again. Image, adjustments, shadows, highlights. And you can see if we do highlights, which isn't on by default, it tries to add some detail. So we'll definitely see it in like the top of the this here. Please note that this does not create detail. So uh, a lot of times, uh, Photographs have more range than we are we see, so we're just kind of going into that picture and modifying a little bit more. Tends to flatten the image out because you are making the lights 
of the image darker and the darker is lighter so it tends to flatten the image out but you can capture more of that detail so it's one of my favorite um go to um image editing things it brings in so much detail um, right there like that i'm gonna go ahead and hit okay so it's two simple sliders too it's really easy to use all right uh next thing i'm gonna i can mess with um I would like to go over curves, but I think it's a little bit too soon for that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump into uh, image um, adjustment selective color. So this one's a little bit easier to use. Uh, selective color, what it allows you to do is if you go image adjustment selective color, it brings up a dialog and you can select the colors. And what it's going to do is it's going to target certain colors in here, uh, such as reds, yellows, um, grains and so on, but in this particular case, it also has something called neutrals, which is really handy. It's kind of like a generic, you know, gray values that aren't, aren't really associated with any one color strongly. Um, so what we can do is we can come into neutrals right here. If I click on neutrals, and we can add or take away certain colors. Now it says it's it's in CMYK for I'm not sure why it's in CMYK. There's probably a reason for it. Um, but CMYK is printing color, so it's cyan, magenta, yellow, black. Cyan's blue, magenta is kind of like a pinkish color, yellow is yellow, and black is black. Um, so you can add a little bit of cyan into something. So like if you want to tint this a bit, the whole thing. So like if I wanted to make it look like it's more in outer space, cyan. So it's a slightly different color experience than most people are used to, than the, the standard hue saturation one. But it has the, 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 the added bonus, a nice bonus about it is that you can target colors. In this case, I'm targeting neutrals. Or if you wanted to, for example, let's say, let's reduce that one. If I wanted to target the reds here. We're also gonna get reds in the thing, but I'll talk about that later. Target the reds here. I can come in here and target the reds up there. You see, you can see how we can add some cyan, take those out or whatever. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now, but we can do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the neutrals and maybe add a little bit of blue, a little bit of magenta to get that purplish kind of hue. So it looks like it belongs in outer space a little bit more. Um, you can also add a little bit of black or take out black. I personally like to take out black out of neutrals. Um, if you add them into neutrals, it'll muddy it down. I, it kind of darkens it. Um, I tend not, not to do that with the, um, this particular editing method. I tend to do the other way. I tend to like to take them out and then add, I, Again, I come from an illustration background, so I tend to like to use my colors more than I like to use black and white if possible. So anytime I can add color back in, you know, I tend to do that. So you can see, if I preview this, check this box before, and it looked fine. It just didn't look like it was in outer space. I'm just kind of tinting it so it kind of fits a little bit better into this, this background with that, that background back there. And again, I'm using selective color which is found under, I'm gonna click okay here. Selective color is found under image, adjustments, selective color. And the great thing is you just, you can commit and do this as much as you want. Now, there is a way to set this up as um, adjustment layers. I will show that in a future lecture. Um, this is destructive editing though, when you go through um, here, but you can actually add adjustment layers as well. That This is not, would be non-destructive. Um, so, but I didn't do it that, that way this time. So there you go. Now, if you wanted to add these adjustments to um, to like a localized area, we can do that. Um, for example, maybe I want these flowers to just be um, hue saturation. Um, and we can do that as well. Um, but again, I'm showing you at this part, I'm showing you a destructive process because there is other ways of doing this, but destructive means that just you can't get back to it unless you undo or you have a file you copy from it saved. Layer masks are non-destructive. You can always edit them. What I just did with this astronaut was, is what we can call a destructive edit because I cannot get back to it um, unless I have a copy of it somewhere. So I'm going to do some more destructive editing. Um, I tend, I tend, it's it's just the era I learned Photoshop before they even had non-destructive editing. We were kind of 
you know, we're just what you know going by, flying by the seat of our pants and like destructive edits everywhere. Um, it's, it's just you know kind of a process that I'm used to. So uh, I apologize, but I will show have videos where I show more to non-destructive edits. So I'm going to do some more destructive editing on on this particular flowers here. Um, so the great thing is I already showed you all the tools to do this. Now I'm going to show you how to actually mix and match them to do this the, with just flowers. So if I were to try to do, let's say, make these flowers blue or purple or pink or whatever, and I come into this layer, and again, you want to make sure you always click on this layer. If I try to do that exact same thing. Um, I can do image adjustments. I'm going to show you a different one here in a minute. But if I use selective color, for example, come in here to the yellows. And this shouldn't work, but it could, very well could. And then I add a bunch of cyan. You can see it's tinting a bunch of other stuff. Like it's, and it looks pretty good on the wall, actually. I actually like what it did with the wall, but I don't like what it did to the flowers, which is actually was my target here. Um, so that's not good. So we can cancel that. We can actually isolate this by using our quick mask. That's what makes this tool so valuable. So I'm going to zoom in on my flowers here. Again, just control plus, control plus, and minus, control minus when you want to zoom out. And I'm going to go ahead and hit my quick mask, switch back to black and white, hit my quick mask, brush tool, and I'm going to just loosely paint these map, these things. Now, don't forget your brush lesson tools. This is in completely so valuable here. So again, if I want to soften the selection, this will go a long way to helping the mask um, showcase um, not being too harsh. So if I soften this, shift left bracket, I'm going to do this like three or four times, and then come in here and paint, you can get a softer brush paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint very loosely. It's not too important. If it's bad, I can always go back and edit this because it's a quick mask. Over these these flowers, so I'm just kind of painting here. I'm, I'm not being too precise. I'm just making sure I get the, all the flowers covered, and we will probably be fine. I can't guarantee it, but if it isn't, then what we do is we go in and refine our edit, I think, some more. All right, I'm gonna hit the Q key. Remember when I said about um, these selections, I was getting them wrong. This is probably one of those cases. I'm gonna hit the Q key here, and let me just zoom out. Control minus, Control minus. Yep. I selected everything but the flowers. This always happens to me. So I'm going to inverse the selection. And again, it's really easy. Control shift I. And now I have just the flowers selected. I always do that. But it was easier to paint all just the flowers and invert it than it was to paint everything around the flowers for the entire image. But again, I, I don't really put much stock into what's red. Let's make something re red um, and then what, the other one's not red and then invert it if you need to. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and um, now do an image adjustment on these, but I'm going to show you another one just for the sake of showing another one. I'm going to show you uh, hue saturation, which does have a quick key. That's how popular it is. But under image adjustments, hue saturation. Now control hue is use the quick key. Now hue saturation is, uh, in my opinion, the better color editor than selective color. So the color, though, had the ability to target particular colors, which was nice. Um, so does hue saturation. Hue saturation, you can target colors, but not as many. You can't, like, you can't target white, black, or neutrals with like, um, hue saturation. But it does a better job, in my opinion, of editing in those colors. So if you don't need the whites, neutrals, or blacks, I tend to use hue saturation, which is for you. If you tend to do neutrals, I tend to use selective color. That's just my general workflow. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to the yellows in this case. And in hue saturation, you drag the hue to change the hue. Um, this works more on an actual RGB, or, you know, Roy G. Biv kind of color things, which is why I think it works a little bit better. It looks a little more natural, where, again, with the select color, you're adding, adding like almost ink pigment to the, the, the thing, which is not as natural. So if I want to make these a different color, I can just drag these left and right. And I'm just going to go weird blue. Ah, oh, why not? Well, no, too much, too much blue. Maybe I'll do, make them, I don't know, pinkish flowers. So 
but I can add some pink. You can desaturate or add more saturation. These are already pretty saturated. I'm gonna maybe desaturate them a little bit, i.e. pull out some color. And then lightness, you can make them brighter or darker, which I don't wanna go darker. Maybe I'll go a little lighter, a light lavender color. Now, if the marching ants are bothering you, that's what I kind of, we kind of, like, you know, most people call the, these selection here, the marching ants. If they are bothering you and you need the selection still, you can hide that selection with Control H. Um, it doesn't deselect it, it just hides the selection. But be warned for a lot of beginning students, they forget that they have that selection there and then they try to do something and they can't. Just be sure, and just remember you have a selection and when you're done, Control D for deselect. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control H, to hide the selection. It's still selected. If I want to bring the selection back just to view it, it's Control H to bring it back. If I want to deselect it, it's Control D to deselect. So I can kind of just get a look at it without having that those in my way. You can kind of see there it is. And you kind of, I'm just kind of backing out to get a view of it. I'm like, ah, that looks pretty. That looks pretty good. Hit OK. All right. And then maybe you know what? Uh, this is awfully yellow. Remember, I still have it selected. If I control H, I bring them back. Um, remember when I tried to do it with selective color? The background was all yellow as well. So you know what? Maybe I'll inverse the selection. And I will once again do a hue saturation. Control U. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm personally going to gray this out. Or just, you know, take out at least some of this, this color. I think it's too much color in here. It looks looks too warm, too much like a living room. Um, you know, I don't mind there being a little bit, but maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll turn down, or maybe I'll change the colors to be a cooler color. So maybe I'll try getting this to be more blue. There we go. You know, something like that. Preview. Something slightly different. All right, I'll hit OK. And I'll hit Control D. So there you go, you can see the, the, the image now. So it's a little bit cooler. If you don't like these, these edits, of course you don't have to do them. Um, I do recommend that you try to push the image, of course, as far as you can, do other things. But for, for example, you don't like the color changes, you know, make, you can make your flowers blue instead of pink, feel free. Okay, so what else can we do with this? We can actually do a lot, of course, but what else do I, we want to, I want to, I want to do with this. Um, first off, I'm gonna start with the planet. Let's go ahead and add the planet here. There we go. I'm going to hide this stuff. Now, with this one, we could come in here and do a layer mask. Of course, that's not a problem. But this is such a simple mask. I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm just going to rasterize this image and straight up just delete the other things. And it shows gives me a chance to show you the interesting ways of doing um, um, selections, uh, elliptical selections, as well as technically rectangular selections, but I'm going to show you some interesting ways to do that. So I'm going to rasterize this image. Again, uh, right click on the word where over here. All right, keep doing that by mistake. So I rasterize this. And I'm going to use the elliptical marquee tool right here. This is the rectangular one, so I'm going to right click here, elliptical marquee tool, or you can hit Shift M to switch back and forth between them. Now the elliptical marquee tool um, and, and the rectangular marquee tool, they all work the same way except one square, one circle, obviously. I'll, the, these tools generally work as they draw from corner to corner. So as when I start, it draws from one corner and I'm dragging to the other corner. Control D to select, these are just like any other selections. If I hold down shift when I do this, It'll still draw corner to corner, but instead of being elliptical, it'll be a perfect sphere or a perfect square. Perfect circle or perfect square. See, there you go. Let's see? Now, you can already use that one key I talked about with the astronaut. Any selection tool you, you do, if you're, it's almost, you're almost always off. Any selection tool that you do, if you hold down spacebar, and again, you don't let go of shift, you're holding down shift for right now, for right now at least. Um, you let go, you hold down shift and hold down spacebar at the same time, you can move the selection. When you let go of spacebar, you can start dragging the selection bigger or smaller if you want. 
So again, I'm just holding down shift when I want to move it because I'm sorry, spacebar when I want to move it um, because I want to be, you know, move it over to the side because it's almost always off. Now, that would have been fine. There's a couple more though. You can totally get it with just shift and spacebar. But if you want to go all pro, here's a couple more for you. If I hold down alt, it drags from the center. Right now, I'm not holding down shift, so it's doing all kinds of elliptical. But it's not drawing corner to corner, it's going from the center. If I hold down Alt and Shift together, I'm doing it from the center, but perfect circles. There you go. So now you can see I'm holding down Alt and Shift. I drag Spacebar, holding down Spacebar, sorry, move it. Let go of Spacebar to, to adjust it some more. I let go of the mouse. There's my selection. And of course, I selected the planet. So if I don't want the planet, I want the everything around the planet. Invert the selection with Control Shift I, and hit Backspace. Again, we could have made a layer mask and filled that. That would probably be technically the right way of doing it, but I'm just going to go ahead and erase everything around the planet. All right. So if we look at this, we can do this planet now. We can grab this planet I deselected. We can move this. You just yeah, throw this in here. Maybe rotate it a little bit so we have all the light side on one. We can make it bigger or smaller if we want. Kind of similar to what we had before. Um, whatever you guys want to do. Now, other things that you can potentially explore with this is you can maybe lower the opacity. I don't think this will work too well, but I'm going to go ahead and try it anyway. Part of any art endeavor is really exploration. And so what I'm going to do is maybe tone down the opacity. It's a great chance to talk about uh, layers here. So on the layer here, I'm going to turn down the opacity by dragging this slider to the left. And you can see it comes transparent. So it looks almost like ethereal or ghost planet. So again, that's why I said it wasn't going to work probably too well. But you know what? Give it a shot. Maybe if you only turn it down a little bit, it will look a little bit better. Or if you want, you can go back and do the, the curves maybe. Or not curves, sorry. Hue saturation or the selective color. Do the neutrals again. And tint it. Again, I like to do uh, image adjustments, select a color if I want to try to tint something a little bit. Again, neutrals. Go back to select color under image adjustment. Uh, and then go neutrals. Maybe add a little bit more cyan, a little more magenta if you want to do that. Or pull out a little bit of yellow. Maybe add a little black in this case. Or take out black. You can try that too. You know, like I said, you'll get different, it'll look different than what you're trying to do. You can see if you like that or not. Uh, sure, I like it. Why not? Um, and then you can put that in there. The other thing you can also explore besides opacity or using image adjustments, and there's, again, there's tons, but at least one more thing I'll give you in this particular lecture is if we mess with, because we're going to be using this a lot in the next image that we're going to talk about, is layer types. Now, there's a lot of good layer types. What these do is they affect how the layer interacts with the layers below it. Um, for example, they're all set by default to normal. Normal just is the image is the image, and that's what it does. Uh, dissolve will try to like pixelate the edges. I don't use this one too often, but it will do it. Um, let me zoom in on this a little bit more. It does this kind of thing around the edges. Dissolve. I don't use, use this one too often. Maybe if it dissolved more, I might use it more. Darken, what it does, well, this is not a very good example, but what darken does, we go back to normal. Anywhere where these pixels are darker than the, the image below it, it will show them. Where it's not, it won't show them. In this case, this is much lighter than this, so it's going to just completely disappear. Uh, multiply is the opposite. Um, wherever the pixels are darker, it will burn them on top. Um, what you might be good for this, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about what might be good for this one. The screen might be good for this one. It's kind of like a lighter opacity in this, in this particular instance, but meh, uh, not quite the same. Um, overlay is always a great one. I like that one a lot. Um, again, these are just some interesting things. If you want to explore them, you can. We're going to use this pretty heavily on the next one that we're going to talk about. So I'm just going to leave this at normal. Next one is our lens flare. So our lens flare is going to go, um, technically can go either completely, you know, um, um, underneath the astronaut, or sorry, underneath the space window, like right here, or it can go through on the top of the whole thing. 
or anywhere else that you might want to put it after you kind of see what I, I do here with this. Um, this lens flare, what these are great for in Photoshop, is exactly what I kind of just showed with the planet. They don't work too well with the planet, but these work really good on these kinds of special effects. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this first, just to get that out of the way. Rasterize. Because we are going to do some image editing in this. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this to, I'm going to jump straight to it, I'm going to jump to overlay. You can see if I put this to overlay, and then I'm going to control T to make this bigger, 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 bigger. You can even rotate this, it's okay too. You can see we can get this like lens flare looking thing, start looking like a J.J. Abrams uh, flick right off the bat. So yes, there's some problems here, but we can fix those. So you want to like kind of get this like lens flare thing. I don't know if I care for this. I think I'm going to put it underneath. Eh, we could. We could put it here and set it to say like a uh, uh, screen. Screen's a good one. You can see right back there. Maybe I'll put it above, trying things out. I kind of like screen. All right, so what does screen do? Screen, what it does is takes the lighter pixels of an image and um, burns them down to the image below, but any of the darker pixels um, fade away. So what's happening here is this is more opaque because it's really bright. And then as this image, I'll go back to normal just to showcase this. As the values get darker, they become more and more transparent. If I go back to screen, so I click on here and go screen. We're getting this edge here because, well, it's not getting too, it's not getting dark enough. So there's a couple things we can do here. We can either darken the edges, um, which that will totally work, or we can um, erase the edges as well with a very soft feathered brush. In fact, I'd recommend a layer mask in that case. Um, we can do a layer mask to get rid of these edges as well. I'm probably going to do a combination of both. So the, the brightness contrast, again, is a destructive edit in this case. The layer mask is not. So image, we'll start with the, the, the brightness contrast, which is under adjustments, brightness contrast. And what this does, I'm going to switch this back to normal so you guys can all see what it's doing. Brightness contrast is a simple two sliders. Contrast increases, makes the lighter pixels brighter and the darker pixels darker. So if I increase that, you can see it makes them, you know, more intense. Well, brightness just makes the whole thing overall brighter or darker. So in my case, I probably want something like this. So I want to do a darker and higher contrast because we want these pixels to get darker. We want it, it looks bad in, in, in normal. But again, you got to remember what, how, how I explain how screen works. Everything that's brighter is going to stick around. Everything that's darker is going to fade. Let's we'll see what that looks like. Hit OK. And yes, we could have done this on screen as well. You can see, you might be able to see it on your guys' screen, but this is much more faint. Gone. It looks very much like a J.J. Abrams film now. You know, Star Trek jokes um, in the motion picture. All right, there you go. So we got that lens flare in, in the, there. Or again, if you don't like it in, over everything, you can maybe drop it back here. Put the lens flare back here, make it look like a planet or a sun back there, or something like that. That would work, totally work as well. I'm going to go ahead and go with the J.J. Abrams jokes here. Put this right inside here. Keep that lens flare in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a layer mask and softly paint out these. So lens flare. I've already done the brightness contrast to it. I can't get, I reduced it greatly, but I wasn't able to get rid of all of it. Layer mask, so I'm gonna add a layer mask for the rest of this reveal all. And I'm just gonna use my brush tool on black. Big brush here. And I'm gonna soften the brush, which it already is. I'm gonna tone down the opacity. And I'm gonna gently brush on these edges here. And again, feathered brush, big brush, and just paint and just slowly paint away. And on your mask, it looks like it looks like that. You can see big brushes with very feathered edges could you know do a very good job on blending stuff together. And if you want, you can add as many of these as you want. You can duplicate the layer, 
rotate it around, make bigger ones smaller, show J.J. Abrams up, and then go from there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is quite a bit we covered. Just, you know, it's a simple exercise, but, made you know, we, did, we showed a lot of valuable tools in this one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And uh, keep on creating your stuff with Photoshop.